a 53-year-old man is accused of fatally stabbing his wife during a verbal altercation while their five-year-old daughter slept next to them because his wife would not cuddle him. At 1.36am on Saturday the 3rd of February, Moises Sanchez called police because he wanted to turn himself in because he killed his wife at their home in the 4,900 block of Chantilly Avenue in Las Vegas, Nevada. When officers arrived, they found Moises in the driveway of the residence and took him into custody. Additional officers found Moises' wife, later identified as Veronica Cortez Rosales, inside the garage which had been converted into a bedroom. She was lying in the bed, covered by a blanket with a significant amount of blood around her body. Medical personnel responded and pronounced her dead at the scene. Also inside the residence were the couple's three young daughters. Moises told police that he and Veronica had been married since 1999 and lived at the premises for about seven years, along with their three young daughters, his adult son, and his daughter-in-law. Moises said Veronica started acting differently three or four months ago, and he believes she was having an affair with her co-worker at McDonald's. He said he could not explain why he thought she was having an affair, other than the fact that she would not be affectionate with him anymore and was texting on the phone late at night, and he knew she wasn't communicating with her family. He told police he once took a phone by force, and she'll become nervous, but he said he never went through it. He also admitted to police that he would spy on Veronica while she was at work, but he never saw her engaged in anything other than normal social interaction. Moises said that on Friday the 2nd of February, he borrowed his friend's vehicle to watch Veronica while she was at work, sitting with his cousin in a nearby parking lot. Moises then called Veronica and made up a story about his car breaking down and asked her to pick him up. Moises told police he was upset that she did not believe him and refused to pick him up. At the end of the shift, Moises said he saw Veronica leave her work and sit in her car for a few minutes before she left the parking lot and drove home. When Moises got home, Veronica was laying in bed with her five-year-old daughter and Moises started to argue with her. Before he got into bed, he grabbed a hunting knife and put it beside him on his side of the bed. Moises told police he attempted to hug Veronica from behind several times, but she kept pushing him away, at which point Moises said he lost it. He said he grabbed the knife and stabbed his wife in the back one time, and demanded that she be quiet after she started screaming, saying he didn't want to wake up the kids. He said he then stabbed her a second time in the neck, but saw blood spreading towards his daughter, so he picked her up and covered Veronica with a blanket, before putting his daughter in a different bed. When asked by detectives, Moises admitted that cuddling up to Veronica and the made-up story about the car were tests, and said that if Veronica had responded to his affection in bed, he would not have killed her. Moises is charged with open murder, and murder in the first degree with the use of a deadly weapon. He remains held at the Clark County Detention Center without bail. A 24-year-old woman has been charged with manslaughter after a neglected six-month-old daughter was found dead inside her apartment. Haley Fisher also faces two counts of wanton endangerment, three counts of first-degree criminal abuse of a child, and possession of drug paraphernalia. At around 10.30pm on Friday the 2nd of February, authorities respond to Haley's residence in the Campbellsville Manor Complex along Anna Court in Campbellsville, Kentucky after a family friend called police to report the dead infant. Haley told investigators that a man came to a house that night with meth and that she and the man smoked the drug in a bedroom at around 9.30pm with the door open and all three of her children home. About 30 minutes later, she said she found the baby unresponsive. Authorities reported that the baby was neglected and malnourished. The infant appeared dehydrated and pale and was clothed in two one-piece jumpers wrapped in a blanket with a cradle cap, a space heater on and a door closed. Emergency medical personnel told police that the temperature inside the baby's room was 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Haley told investigators that the baby girl had been losing weight since Thanksgiving, but that she hadn't been to a doctor since she was born. She told police that she didn't have a car and couldn't get the girl to a hospital, but when detectives asked how she got groceries, she told them that friends would take her. Authorities said that Haley had ample resources to get her child medical attention, but refused to do so. Child Protective Services removed Haley's two other children, a one-year-old and a three-year-old boy, to a hospital for an evaluation. The youngest boy tested positive for meth. Haley later told police she uses meth three or four times per week and showed them a small safe on the kitchen table that held numerous items of drug paraphernalia, including pipes, grinders and scales. She told police the residue on the scales would test positive for meth. Police said Haley had no answer to the question as how she could regularly obtain meth but not get her child medical attention for more than two months. 
Haley was arrested on Monday the 5th of February and arraigned on Wednesday the 7th of February, where she was ordered held at the Taylor County Jail on a $500,000 bond. Haley's due back in court on the 14th of February. On Tuesday the 6th of February 2024, 29-year-old Morgan Barnhill pleaded guilty to murder and the beating death of his friend, 25-year-old Etienne Murray in 2022. At 3.22pm on the 29th of March 2022, authorities responded to the 4300 block of Windy Hill Circle East in Mobile, Alabama for a possible burglary. Morgan told police he saw Etienne trying to enter a shed on his property, so he hit him over the head with a shovel. During the investigation, detectives learned that Morgan intentionally misled officers about the attempted burglary on his property. Investigators said they noticed inconsistencies in his statements and concluded that he made a fake call about the burglary. He was arrested for murder after Etienne died three days later. Authorities said that Morgan had befriended Etienne a couple of weeks prior to the murder, hiring him to do odd jobs for him around his house. But Morgan became suspicious Etienne had stolen items from his property, so he lured Etienne to his home by pretending they were attending a barbecue together. When Etienne arrived, Morgan confronted him. When Etienne started walking away from him, Morgan struck him in the head with a shovel and then continued to beat him with a pipe and a 2 by 4 Morgan tied Etienne up and dragged him to the backyard, where he was left severely injured and unconscious. About two hours after the beating, Morgan contacted police and said he stopped Etienne breaking into his shed and had tied him up. Morgan eventually admitted to police that the burglary story was a lie. Morgan is due for sentencing on the 4th of March and faces between 20 years to life in prison. A teenager turned himself in to police after he fatally shot his father and injured his mother. At around 9.20pm on the 7th of February, authorities responded to 9689 Wallace Street in Conroe, Texas, on a report of an assault with a firearm. When deputies arrived, they found a man in a critical condition lying on the ground of the residence with a gunshot wound to his back. Despite attempting life-saving measures, the man was pronounced dead at the scene. The victim was identified as 41-year-old Leroy Constantine Jr., Deputies also found an adult female victim with a gunshot wound to her neck. She was transported to a local hospital, where she underwent surgery and is expected to survive. During the investigation, detectives determined that 17-year-old Trayvonte Constantine fatally shot his father and wounded his mother during a verbal dispute. Authorities said that home surveillance video captured the entire incident. Investigators said that Trey shot Leroy in the back, and that same bullet passed through him and hit his wife in the back of the neck. Investigators said that Trey got into an argument with his parents because his father found his gun and took the ammunition. Authorities said that Trey knew he had one bullet in his car so he got it, loaded his gun and shot his father. Investigators said that a sibling called 911 following the shooting and Trey fled the scene. At 5.05am the following morning, Trey turned himself into the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. He's charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and murder. He remains held at the Montgomery County Jail on a $250,000 bond. Authorities said that Trey had previously been on juvenile probation, but was let off due to good behaviour. Trey's sister Brianna Constantine said that my brother is not a bad person. He has mental health issues. My mum and dad tried everything they possibly could with my brother. She said her parents were high school sweethearts with three children and two grandchildren. The investigation into the matter continues. 24-year-old John Michael Thames is behind bars for fatally beating his girlfriend's three-month-old baby girl. On the 5th of January, authorities responded to reports of an unresponsive infant at 1189 Oak Tree Road in Ripley, West Virginia. Paramedics were able to temporarily resuscitate baby Everly prior to her going into cardiac arrest. She was taken to Jackson General Hospital, then airlifted to Ruby Memorial Hospital for more specialised care. Medical staff at the time said Everly's condition was grave and that she was suffering from numerous skeletal and cranial fractures, a brain bleed and bilateral retinal hemorrhaging. Doctors said Everly's conditions could have only been caused by severe abuse. Authorities determined that John was left alone at his girlfriend's house with baby Everly while the child's mother went to a store, only to return a short time later to find her daughter unresponsive and she called 911. Investigators said that through a series of interviews that evening, John confessed to slamming baby Everly onto the floor. He said that he swung the child back and forth while frustrated, and later varied his statement by saying that the child's head did hit the floor, possibly hard enough to fracture her skull. 
He said he put the infant back into the crib after the assault and waited for the child's mother to come home. John was initially arrested and charged with abuse resulting in injury. On the 4th of February, baby Everly died after spending 30 days in hospital and life support. Her cause of death was due to complications from non-accidental head trauma. Following her death, John's charge was upgraded to death of a child by abuse. John remains held at the South Central Regional Jail on a $500,000 bond. If convicted, he faces between 15 years to life in prison.